In a previous class, I started discussing properties of conductors in the special state of electrostatic equilibrium. So, and today we will continue, although we already solved a few problems in our recitation class, but every time we're sort of uh, slightly repeating things first in the lectures, then in the recitation classes, right? So, it's good to repeat a few things. So, now, uh, what we discussed in the previous class. <coughs> so, we, uh, why it's not responding, just a second. All right, there, All right. Um, we compared dielectrics uh, and uh, conductors. And the major differences between them is in simple fact that uh, metals or conductors, they have tons of free electrons. That empty space between atoms in the crystalline structure is filled with tons of free electrons. But uh, in dielectrics there are no free electrons and that's why if you apply potential difference it's so easy to create current in the conductor because there are electrons and they will flow in the direction you want. Uh, but in the dielectrics there is no one to flow. Right? Then, and that's the major difference of course between conductors and dielectrics. Right? Now, then we discussed um, conductors. So what does it mean a conductor to be in a state of electrostatic equilibrium, right? So uh, if you take a piece of a conductor, any piece of metal, expose it to some external uh, field, for example, all right? So then uh, for some short period of time, maybe microsecond, maybe picosecond, right? So electrons are going to run like crazy inside of the conductor, uh, those free electrons, right? Because they feel, they're going to feel electric force and that electric force is going to drive them crazy. And they're going to keep running and running and running until the electrons distribute themselves in a such a way so that the net electric field inside of the conductor will be zero. So from that moment, when the, elect when the net electric field is zero and of course electrons stop running, from that moment we can say that the conductor now is in the state of electrostatic equilibrium, right? So from this point, most of the time, uh, our conductors are going to be in this uh, state of electrostatic equilibrium when the electric field is zero and electrons do not run. <coughs> then, uh, after that, yesterday, oh, in, not yesterday, in the previous lecture, uh, we discussed um, uh, charges because all these properties of conductors, it's all about electric field char and it charges, charges and the electric fields. All the time we're going to talk about these two quantities, right? So now, uh, what if we have a piece of a conductor in the electrostatic equilibrium and let's say it is charged for example, positively charged. Of course, we can ask, our, we can ask ourselves a question where um, is this charge uh, going to reside? And using Gauss's law, very quickly, we showed, proved uh, that uh, this excess charge can reside only on the surface, in this case, on the exterior surface, right? Uh, so it's impossible for an excess charge to be inside of the conducting material. That's how nature works, right? So we're just modeling and describing it. Then, so the end, it looks like that's where we finished in the previous lecture. Yeah, that's the, that was the end of the lecture. And now the new material. So now at this point, we can say we discussed electric field and charges, everything about the electric field and the electric charge inside of the conductor. What about outside of the conductor? Okay, so now let's look uh, at the electric field just above the surface of the conductor, right? And again, we're going to assume that conductor is going to be in the state of electrostatic equilibrium. And since we want to see, since we want to discuss electric field outside of the conductor, of course, the conductor must be charged. Because if the conductor is not charged, uh, then of course, electric field would be zero, right? So let's assume that this is our uh, conductor, right? Again, electrostatic equilibrium, you see electric field is zero, uh, all the charges are along the surface, so everything as it should be. And so now I claim, <coughs> all right, and then we will prove it uh, very quickly, that uh, electric field just above the surface of the conductor is perpendicular to the surface, is perpendicular to the surface, right? right. Mm, for example, this way, and uh, that uh, and here, right? So you see everywhere it's perpendicular to the surface of the conductor. And so how can we prove that? It's quite, actually quite straightforward. 
Um, let's use what is called proof by contradiction. Uh, so let's assume that there is a, a component of electric field along the surface of this conductor. So you see, we claim that electric field only perpendicular, but now let's assume that uh, electric field is also, there is a component of the electric field along the surface of the conductor. Okay, so let's make that assumption. And what would be a response of electrons? Because it's still a conductor, has tons of free electrons. So what would be the response of, of, of electrons to this uh, component of the electric field? Of course, those electrons will start experiencing force in this direction. And of course, electrons will start running along the surface. But you see, you hear the word, they, start, they will start running. But uh, we already made an assumption that this conductor is in the state of electrostatic equilibrium. And you remember two major things about the electrostatic equilibrium. Electric field is zero and electrons do not run. But here we, 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 start, we contradict uh, ourselves, right? So here we will get, we're getting that uh, electrons st will start running. It means what? It means that uh, electric component of the electric field along the surface of the conductor is impossible, right? In the state of electrostatic equilibrium. If there is a component uh, along the surface, it means that most likely that is um, um, still conductor trying to reach the state of electrostatic equilibrium. Right. So, in electrostatic equilibrium, electric field just above the surface of the conductor must be perpendicular to the surface. Guys, you're going to see oh, yeah, two, 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 two. you're going to see these results in your lab number two, right? Very soon. Uh, in that lab, you're going to map the electric field. You're going to get electric field lines, some additional lines, right? And you're going to see uh, you're going to have in your system three. Uh, electrodes, just basically three pieces of metals. And if you do everything properly, if you do everything correctly, your electric field lines must enter those conductors at 90 degrees. So basically electric field lines, electric field must, will be in your system uh, perpendicular to the, uh, to the surfaces of those conductors which you are going to have in your system. So you're going to observe this experimentally, right? Right. Of course, with an experimental error, they are going to be give or take perpendicular, right? Okay, so <clears throat> these are some fundamental things. And now, of course, we can ask ourselves, so is it possible, for example, to get uh, some expression for the electric field uh, just above the surface? Yeah, and it can be derived. Uh, this is the derivation, but we're not going to... Uh, but I'm not going to uh, go through this derivation, right? So if you want to do it, you can read it by yourself. Again, uh, its its derivation is based on Gauss's law, right? And after reasonably short derivation, you're going to get the expression for the magnitude of the electric field just above the surface of the conductor. So electric field equals to surface charge density, because you remember our excess charge can be on the surface. So of course, uh, it makes sense that we, sh we must introduce uh, surface charge density, because charge is only on the surface of the conductor. So that is the surface charge density on the surface of the conductor divided by our universal constant epsilon zero, epsilon sub naught. Right. <clears throat> okay. We're not going to solve any problems using this formula in the recitation classes, but in your homework, there will be one simple problem. There will be some uh, coins. I think it's a, it's, it's a penny. And uh, I think electric field just above the surface of the penny is given and you needed to find, uh, and you will need to find the surface charge density. Pff, piece of cake, right? Just solve this formula for eta and you will get uh, the uh, surface charge density uh, on the uh, surface of the metal. Right? Okay, so, <clears throat> so that's another uh, property of conductors. And now, uh, what's next? Uh, I think, ah, yeah, the question. <clears throat> now let's answer this question. So let me first state it and then I will enable it. Uh, so we have, you see, a uh, metal sphere, which is electrically neutral. Again, you remember, what does it mean electrically neutral? It doesn't have an excess charge. But also at the same time, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any charge. It has just equal amount of positive and negative charges. 
right? So overall, uh, this piece of metal, this electrical, uh, this metal sphere is electrically neutral. Then uh, let's take a uh, no, positive uh, point charge, Q, and position it at the distance R from the center of that sphere, right? Just for fun. And so now uh, we can ask ourselves the question, so what will be the value of the net electric field at the center of this sphere? The radius of the sphere is also given R capital, right? And you see the options A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so let me enable. Activated, nope, not yet, and unlocked. Okay, yeah, I see your answers have started appearing. Wow, such a uh, wide distribution of answers. Okay, there is, it looks like there's some um guys yes i know i think it's sort of like a half a second uh there is a delay i think between uh the audio and uh, video right um i just i didn't have time to dive into the system and slightly adjust it right uh, but it's it's not uh, we tested before uh, with my friend and it's 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 not completely terrible right but of course, yeah, it, it's noticeable, right? About half a second, uh, there is a delay. Hmm. Yeah, still, uh, the PowerPoint presentation doesn't show uh, your answers. Pretty much, uh, what, 20% option A, 23B, 25% C, and 31% option uh, D, right? So, I'm quite surprised that the distribution is almost, almost like equal between options, right? Um, And answers are still... Still changing. Okay, uh, it should be enough um, for you to think a little bit. And, and uh, in this question, not much to think. Uh, it's, it's, it's based uh, on our previous um, lecture discussions. And I reviewed it uh, in uh, today's lecture. <clears throat> okay, so let me discuss. Guys, uh, again, this conductor is in the electrostatic equilibrium, right? So we, uh, we brought this point charge to this point, right? And then we, of course, we wait, uh, okay, we waited. We waited for, I don't know, very short period of time. Uh, waited until this conductor uh, reaches what is called the electrostatic equilibrium. And what is uh, the major feature of a conductor in the electrostatic equilibrium? Electric field equals the net electric field inside of the conductor is zero. At every point uh, or every point of uh, the <coughs> of this of this uh, conductor, every point at every point of this conductor, uh, electric field is going to be zero. And of course, the center is also going to be, is going to have a z uh, zero net electric field. So the answer is D. So in this case, it's, uh, uh, there's not much uh, 
to to discuss or think but nevertheless let me discuss what actually happens right so uh, before it reaches that electrostatic equilibrium so <clears throat> first it's just a sphere right a metal sphere electrically neutral then uh, we bring this point charge to this point of course this point creates its own electric field which extends all the way to that infinity that infinity so electric field is going to be everywhere created by this point charge of course what will be the response and of course electric field will penetrate and it will be inside of this mat or in, inside of this um, uh, conducting material what will be the response of electrons because this piece of metal has tons of free electrons which are capable of moving anywhere they want of course, those electrons will start experiencing the electric force from that electric field. And of course, they will start moving. Which way? Of course, they will start moving uh, towards this surface. Okay, this surface of, uh, of the closer to me. Okay, this surface of the sphere. So electrons will be accumulated here. But since this is an electrically neutral sphere, of course, there will be positive charges left behind on that side. So basically, we're going to polarize this piece of metal. So uh, negative charges will be induced on this surface and positive charges will be induced on that surface. So we have negative charges, positive charges. They're going to create internal electric field in the direction opposite to the direction of the electric field created by this point charge. So we have two electric fields internal inside of the conductor, external of the same absolute value, but opposite in the direction. And of course, as a result, the net electric field is going to be zero inside of the conductor. At every point inside of the conductor, the net, net electric field inside of the conductor will be zero. So electrons, like brave soldier, every time, whenever they feel that uh, some external electric field penetrates inside of the conductor, they will start running and they will keep running and distributing themselves properly. And they will never stop until... Uh, uh, never stop uh, till the moment uh, when they will make net electric field zero. So at that moment we can say, yeah, the conductor has reached an electrostatic equilibrium, right? So from this point, remember guys, it doesn't matter what we're going to uh, create outside. We can, I can bring over here another charge, maybe negative, right? Or maybe over here another positive charge, right? And nevertheless, electrons inside of the conductor will find the proper distribution of, the, uh, of themselves, making net electric field inside of the conductor zero. And of course, remember, we need to wait for a short period of time until electrons uh, find those spots, those places, right? They will stop running and the electric field will be zero. So in this question, pretty much nothing to discuss. D is zero. I mean, the option is D. Electric field is zero, right? Remember that. Right? From time to time, I give a questions like this uh, among multiple choice questions on, uh, on, mm -hmm. on the exams. Right. So now uh, let's move. If you, uh, if something is not clear, uh, let me know. <clears throat> yeah, the answer is zero. And uh, now let's make our situation slightly more complicated. Um, let's make a hole inside of the conductor. All right. And uh, now, <clears throat> again, we assume that conductor is, not, is, is going to be in the state of electrostatic equilibrium. Uh, let's uh, charge this conductor. Let's charge this conductor, right? And uh, now there is a hole, right? So that hole doesn't have connection to the outside world. And uh, what, 10 minutes ago we discussed, uh, so not discussed, refreshed, uh, that uh, <clears throat> uh, any excess charge, could be only on the surface of the conductor. At that moment, we had only one surface of the conductor, external surface. But now we have two surfaces. We have interior surface and we have an external surface. Of course, the logical question, is it possible to have those excess charges now on this interior surface? Absolutely logical question, right? Because now we have two types of surfaces. And so now let's just quickly uh, see uh, is, are we going to have any excess charge on this interior surface? So that, that's the question, <coughs> right? And in order to answer this question, again, <laughs> we're going to use Gauss's law. As I told you at the beginning of the previous lecture, uh, that uh, this 
uh, discussion goes right after introduction of the Gauss's law because Gauss's law is used a lot, a lot in these lectures. Right. Okay, so that's Gauss's law. And of course, you remember the first thing you need to do, you have to pick the Gaussian, Gaussian surface. Any Gaussian surface will work, right? So, of course, having that gigantic freedom, of course, uh, you need to pick the Gaussian surface which will work for you, which is best for you. In this case, I want to pick the Gaussian surface which is just above that interior surface. I don't know, my soul desires to pick this surface, right? And, and there is nothing wrong with that according to Gauss's law. Okay, so now we can apply Gauss's law uh, for that surface. And, and of course, you should be able to tell me immediately what's the value of the electric flux through that Gaussian surface. Since that Gaussian surface, yeah, it's just above the interior surface, but nevertheless, it is inside of the conducting material. And the previous clicker question you remember, if you are inside of the conducting material, the, electric, the net electric field is zero. Okay, electric field is zero, right? So you see, electric field is zero. So it means that the electric flux must be zero as well, because you're basically integrating the zero, uh, uh, zero function. All right. So of course, uh, electric field is zero, electric flux is zero, and Q enclosed the total amount of charge inside of our Gaussian surface is also zero. So it means that it's impossible, physically impossible, uh, for an excess charge to be on the interior surface, right? So, <clears throat> so uh, great, uh, it's impossible to have excess charge on the interior surface. And now, um, <clears throat> okay, so that's the conclusion. And now, very important consequence of this. What can you say? Now, after all this discussion, what can you say about the electric field in the hole? Of course, it will be zero. Electric field inside of the conductor is zero. Then there is no any excess charge on this uh, interior surface. Of course, the electric field inside of the hole will be also zero. Application of that. There is a very, very important application of this fact. Electric field inside of this hole is zero. Some students, especially from E department, they see immediately, right? Some students don't see that. Okay, guys, let's imagine this situation. You work, you measure something in your I know, experimental setup. Uh, and your <clears throat> piece of equipment is very sensitive. Your measurements are very sensitive to some... Uh, external electric fields. And of course, these days, uh, ele electric fields, external electric fields are everywhere. We have uh, routers, we have cell towers, we have uh, tons of tons of electromagnetic signals around us, right? And of course, they all <clears throat> get into our equipment uh, and it's possible for them to affect uh, our measurements. And actually, I experienced that, right? So when I was uh, working on my final project, uh, just before I defended my PhD, and we worked uh, in the East Campus, uh, one of Lancet Mills. <clears throat> and at that time, I hated with all my heart our UML, our university radio station. It's, uh, you know, the, uh, the antenna of uh, radio station is on the foxhole. So we were receiving a very, very strong signal from the, uh, from the university radio station. So we were looking at the spectrum analyzer, right? And there was this huge spike, right? Uh, not far from my signal, which I wanted to detect and analyze and so on, right? So it, dry, it d drove me crazy. So even at some point, my advisor recommended, let's just uh, uh, protect the, our equipment using this idea, using this idea. So what if you, for example, uh, take your sensitive piece of equipment, a position inside of the hole, it will be free from uh, picking up uh, free, it will be protected from external elect electric fields, electromagnetic fields, right? It's essentially Faraday's cage. It's a Faraday's cage. And in my situation, right, yeah, we thought about building Faraday's cage around the optical setup, but eventually we just uh, used additional filters and uh, filter out that signal, um, 
to the level which was enough for us, right? So, yeah, it's a, it's a physics behind Faraday's cage. Physics behind Faraday's cage, right? <clears throat> so, for example, let's say uh, this is in the electric field. It's a nice uniform electric field created by a parallel plate capacitor. And let's say you want to remove electric field from this, uh, for example, the region, right? I don't know, for your piece of equipment. So what you take a, uh, I don't know, some box, metal, of course, metal box, right? Uh, with a hole, right? Of course, uh, those electrons, you see, immediately they will start running because they experience external electric field. Electrons will start, ru start running, distributing themselves properly. And you see, as a result, uh, negative charges are accumulated on this surface. So we induced negative uh, charges on this surface and uh, they left behind positive charges on that surface. So again, inside we have battle of two fields, external electric field, internal electric field, and they give us a zero net electric field, zero net electric field. And also you see what happened to the electric field lines just above the surface of the conductor, the perpendicular. And that's what you're going to observe again in your lab number two. Right? You see everywhere electric field just above the metal is perpendicular. Right? And so now if you position any piece of equipment inside, of course, it will be free from uh, it, it will be protected uh, from the external electric uh, field, in influences from the external electric fields, right? <clears throat> um, yeah, it's called Faraday's cage or screening, right? Uh, I found this picture on, <laughs> on the net, on the internet, right? Uh, so you see the guy, ah, yeah, uh, actually quite often uh, you don't have to build this solid uh, Faraday's cage. It can be uh, just... Uh, <clears throat> It can be like a like a net, right? Made of I don't know, wires, right? Metal wires, right? But of course, in this case, you have to be careful. You have to design it properly, right? So that protect what is inside uh, completely. Uh, me, I would never stand into that cage, right? No, I I know physics to some extent, but still, every time has some doubts, right? And I would I would I would like being zipped, right? So I would never do anything like this, right? No. Oh, and of course, in the real life, right, in order to protect our equipment, you don't have to actually build um, a cage made out of metal. For example, like computer, some other devices. Uh, boxes can be made or painted inside uh, using some, I know, conductive uh, paints, right, or some uh, conductive fabric uh, can be used uh, when the boxes are... Um, uh, made right so yeah there are some uh, ways of <coughs> avoiding using uh, metals right but anyway physics is still the same right so um, electrons <laughs> free electrons move around uh, making a uh, net electric field inside zero and that's what uh, can protect your equipment from the external influences right it's a very very of course uh, Important application, right, and of course, uh, which is used uh, by many, many people, right. <clears throat> and uh, I usually show this demonstration, right, but now I don't think I have uh, the metal foil. I would, in a uh, classroom, I would take my phone, right, right. first the call goes to my phone uh, from somebody, right. Uh, and then I would wrap my phone into just a regular aluminum foil from, I know, Walmart. Right. But of course, you need to wrap it properly. Sometimes I use uh, two pieces of foil and it stopped working. So it stopped receiving uh, any uh, signal because what is the signal? It's electromagnetic uh, wave from the, from the tower. So there is an electric field, right? So, and if there is a Faraday's cage, of course, electric field cannot penetrate and signal. Uh, the phone cannot get the signal, right? All right. Um, okay, so... Now, next, uh, now let's make situation even slightly more complicated. So you remember we made, ma we made a hole inside of um, our conductor. Uh, and so now let's position a, some point charge inside of that void, inside of that hole. I'm just trying to make situation more and more complicated, right? So again, let's assume that we have a piece of a conductor. Let's assume it's charged, for example, positively charged. Right. Uh, then uh, again, let's assume that uh, there is a hole 
right? And inside of the hole, let's dump some, for example, positive charge plus Q. And now we change situation relative to the previous one. And of course, we can ask ourselves the question. So what about the, extra, uh, the excess charges in this case? So is it possible for an excess charge to be on this interior surface? And of course, as a result, uh, what uh, is it going to affect the, ne uh, the, the, um, uh, yeah, the net charge on the exterior surface? Right? Completely logical question. So what will be the, uh, with the amount of charge on the interior surface and on exterior surface? <coughs> right? So again, basically the same question. And uh, so now, in order to answer this question, again, we will have to use Gauss's law. Gauss's law again, you, you, you're getting probably sick and tired of that Gauss's law. Okay, so again, Gauss's law, now you're familiar with this, with the structure. And again, first step, you have to pick the Gaussian surface. Again, you, you can pick any Gaussian surface. And of course, I'm picking the best possible for this, uh, to answer this particular question, just above the interior surface. Right. So that's our Gaussian surface. And of course, you immediately uh, can answer the question, what's the value of this electric flux? Right. Of course, it will be zero because, again, a conductor in the electrostatic equilibrium, electric field inside zero. So electric flux, of course, will be also zero. So as a result, uh, we can say that Q enclosed, Q enclosed, the total amount of charge inside of our Gaussian surface is zero. But, but, so it's a pretty much the same uh, conclusion as in the previous slide, but now inside of our Gaussian surface, we see immediately there is a plus Q charge. And in order to make the Q enclosed zero, net charge inside of the uh, Gaussian surface zero, it means that somewhere over here inside of the Gaussian surface, there must be charge minus Q. So that plus Q minus Q would give us zero. And where that negative charge can be, there is only one place. On the interior surface, on the interior surface of this uh, conductor, there must be negative charge accumulated or induced, right? So we can uh, come to the conclusion that this, on this, in this case, in this case, on this interior surface, there must be net negative charge and absolute, va uh, absolute value of the charge equals to the value of the charge inside of the hole, but opposite in the sign, opposite in the sign. <clears throat> Again, so how can we um, justify the appearance of this negative charge conceptually? We've just proved it mathematically, right? But how can we justify it conceptually? The same like I've done already several times. So what we have, we have a, a, this positive charge. Of course, this positive charge creates its own uh, electric field, which is external for our conducting, conducting material. Of course, this external electric field uh, penetrates inside of the uh, conducting material. And of course, there, there are tons of free electrons. They are again like brave soldiers. They stand up, right, and go to protect their territory. So how they, of course, they will, they experience electric force and of course they run towards this interior surface, leaving behind positive charges over there, right, on the exterior surface. And of course, as a result, they create an internal electric field and the direction of that internal electric field is opposite to the direction of the external electric field. As a result, making the net electric field zero, right. So as a result, we have uh, negative charges accumulated on the interior surface. Or even in very, very simple uh, words, we can say the electrons inside of the conductor, they see positive charge in the hole. Of course, we know opposite charges, they attract. Of course, as a result, negative electrons will be just attracted to the positive charge inside of the hole. And of course, they will run towards that positive charge, but of course, they cannot reach that positive charge because there is a border, there is a wall, all right? So they will just uh, reach that <coughs> wall and stay at that wall uh, without being able to uh, reach that positive charge which is inside of the hole, right? But that's the mathematical uh, proof why there, is a, there will be a negative charge uh, of the same absolute value as the charge inside. 
<coughs> but opposite inside. Uh, professor, I have a quick yeah. question. Uh, so uh, if the charge inside the hole, let's say it's greater than the charge outside, outside of the outside. the whole uh, conductor, would the uh, external fields be uh, equal to each other? Okay, okay. Uh, there are still tons of tons of uh, electrons, free electrons. So if <coughs> uh, this charge, this charge is large, of course, uh, still plenty of electrons inside of the conductor and uh, they will be uh, accumulated over there, right? If, if, if you create, I don't know, really gigantic influence from outside, gigantic influence of outside from outside right so from that uh charge which, which is inside in that case most likely you will start damaging the situation it will be a damaging situation you will you will just start getting some sparks right sort of uh you will start uh destroying conductor right okay. so we're not going to discuss uh the uh, destructive situation so we're going to discuss so at that point it wouldn't be in electrostatic equilibrium right yeah that, that we will be we will we will be starting uh, seeing different parts of physics right? we will be starting yeah. different pa parts of physics which of course we're not going to discuss uh, over here right so every time here we are talking about reasonable amount of fields right uh, oh. external electric influences right? oh. <coughs> Um, ah, okay, so that's, uh, and from this point, you just need to remember, guys, um, that on the interior surface, there will be charge accumulated, uh, equal to the charge inside in absolute value, and opposite in the sign, right? Now, what about the, uh, ah, yeah, another thing. <clears throat> of course, distribution of these negative charges can be complicated. It depends on the shape of this hole. It depends where this charge is in the hole is positioned. Is it closer to one side or is it at the center or is it closer to the other side? So distribution of these electrons on the interior surface can be complicated. We can only guarantee that the total amount of charge on the interior surface will be equals to minus Q. Q small. Right? So now about what about the uh, charge on the external surface? Because now it is going to affect uh, the amount of charge on the external surface. And again, remember that the total charge in the conducting material is plus Q. So we have the total charge, right? We know the amount of charge on the interior surface. And now we need to answer the question, what about the total charge on the external surface? And the uh, solution, oh, no, yeah, yeah solution or a process of getting the amount of charge on the external surface in this case is actually trivial right we discussed it in in our recitation class yesterday but uh it's it's worth of repeating one more time uh, look uh here what we need to use uh very simple analogy let's say you have i don't know two rooms which are connected but these two rooms kind of isolated from the outside world so no, no one can escape from those two rooms. And let's say you, I know, dump, I know, 10 people into those two rooms. And so now we know the total amount of people inside of those two rooms. And now if I know, for example, let's say that there are, I know, four people in one room. And if I ask you uh, the question, what will be the total number of people in the second room? Of course, it's an insulting question. Of course, there will be six. Or if there are three in one room, then there must be seven in the second room, right? We have in this case what we can call I don't know, conservation of people in two rooms. This situation is exactly the same. We have a total number of people, total charge inside of the conductor plus Q. And these charges can be only in two places. Interior surface, which we just discussed and exterior surface or external surface the charge that excess charge you remember it cannot be inside of the conducting material physically impossible that's how god created nature this uh, this nature right so we have total number of people plus q and two options two room external surface and interior surface so we just need to apply over here what is called conservation of charge inside of the conducting material 
conducting material. This charge plus Q, it's, a, it's not part of the conducting material. This charge plus Q is in the vacuum, right, outside of the conducting material. It's kind of physically inside of the, of the hole, but it's not part of the conducting material. So I'm not counting that charge plus Q. I only, I only want to count charges inside of the conductor, physically inside of the conductor. All right. Okay, so now we can write what is called conservation of charge inside of the conductor, right? <clears throat> so I can write, so minus Q, it's the charge on the interior surface, right? You see. Then plus Q, that's our unknown Q capital, it's on the outer surface. It's a second room, room number one, room number two. And we know that this the amount of charge we dumped into our conductor. So this was given from the very beginning. This we found, and that's what we we need to find. <laughs> Trivial algebraic equations are just solid for Q outer, right? So, uh, and you will get that it will be plus Q capital and plus Q small because when you move this uh, term minus Q to the uh, right hand side of the equation, of course, it will become positive plus Q, right? So you will get plus Q capital uh, plus Q small. That will be the total amount of charge on the external surface. So on the interior surface minus Q, on the external surface Q capital plus Q small. If you add those two numbers, right, Q capital, uh, what, Q capital plus Q small plus minus Q, of course you will get the total amount of charge inside of the conductor plus Q. Trivial, simple algebra, right? Again, we, we solved one problem in our recitation classes yesterday, right? Very similar to this, right? And here's another example, <clears throat> right? And of course, we can easily increase complexity of this problem, but it's not going to really increase, I don't know, mathematics. Um, uh, for example, instead of one hole, we can make two holes. Uh, logic is exactly the same and you're going to have instead of two room situation you're going to have three room situations so there will be a uh, total amount of charge can be can be uh, the charge can be only on the interior surface number one interior surface number two and external surface but the logic is exact is exactly the same right so you can increase complexity easily but it's not going to increase uh, mathematics uh, any significantly right? Okay, so uh, these are the properties. Now let's answer another question. And you and you see they're not they're not that bad. Uh, after a few examples, usually students uh, do very well uh, with the problems of this type. All right, another question for you. So what about time? Okay, cool. So uh, what do we have here? Uh, again, I will enable it in a second. But first, I want to discuss. Again, we have a piece of metal, you see some kind of ellipsoid, electrically neutral. It means the net charge is zero. In the previous case, we discussed uh, that there was a non-zero charge, all right, a total charge inside of the conductor. Now, Q total is zero. Then there is a hole, and inside of that hole, there is a positive charge plus Q, you see. So we need to answer the question. What's the question? The total charge on the exterior surface of the metal. So we need to answer the question. What's the total amount of charge on the exterior surface? And of course, you also need to answer uh, what's the amount of charge on the interior surface. And you see the options uh, A, B, C, D. And now let me enable it because Paul everywhere doesn't want to connect automatically. Second. Okay, enable, activate. <clears throat> oh, okay, I see the answers. Okay, so far the leader is plus three nanocoulombs, but option C is also not far behind. 
and option A is also not far behind. Some people believe it's zero nanocoulomb. Guys, don't, don't confuse. We were talking about zero net electric field inside of the conductor, but we never said about uh, zero charge. Of course, it's not impossible to have zero charge on, under certain conditions, but I'm afraid of, uh, of the confusion um, between the electric field and the electric charge. <laughs> Okay, so option B is 60% 60, 60 option C 35% and now a little bit for the option A. Okay, it looks like numbers more or less uh, get stabilized. It looks like now I should be able to do, I, 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 I can start discussing now. Okay, so it's pretty much application of what we discussed in the, at the end of the previous slide. Conservation of charge. Uh, inside of the conducting material, but before we need to uh, apply uh, that property. So if you have a charge in the hole, then the op uh, charge of an opposite side, a sign opposite sign, <coughs> will be induced on the interior surface. But in absolute value, it will be exactly the same, but sign is going to be different. So if we have plus three nanocoulomb in the hole, then electrons, of course, will be induced on the inner surface. And the total amount of this negative charge will be minus three, uh, three nanocoulombs. So, and of course, the sign is opposite. So, it will be minus three nanocoulomb will be induced on the interior surface, right? And again, these electrons will come to the surface to make the net electric field inside of the conductor zero, right? So, okay, induction of a negative charge. And then, uh, in order to answer the question, what will be the total amount of charge on the outer surface, we need to apply conservation of charge, right? So, uh, Q total, which is zero, equals to uh, the total amount of charge on the inner surface, which is minus three nanocoulomb, plus the total amount of charge on the external surface, right? So if we have here a minus three nanocoulombs, that the uh, total amount of charge on the outer surface will be plus three nanocoulomb, right? So it will be plus three nanocoulombs. So positive charge will be um, accumulated on the uh, outer surface, right? Actually, I can. So that's the answer. Let me open it up. Yeah. And now let me just quickly uh, to. Uh, because sometimes I know students are slightly confused at this point and the class is almost over. Let me just for a second. So I just apply what Q total equals to Q on inner surface plus Q on outer surface. Conservation of charge, All right? This is zero, we know, and we found this. And that's our unknown. So we can solve it for Q outer. It will be uh, Q total minus Q in, right? And so again, Q total it's zero, right? And we have minus from the expression and Q on the inner surface, we just discussed it's minus three nanocoulombs. So as a result, we're getting the, amount, the total amount of charge on the outer surface, it's a plus three nanocoulombs, right? On the, in the previous slide, this Q total was not zero. And in the example which we discussed in the recitation class, it wasn't zero, but now it's zero. Sort of, I made it this way in order to simplify these calculations. But again, it's just a conservation of charge, right? In the conducting material. And sin, since we still have a, uh, one minute, let me uh, <coughs> discuss another thing briefly. At this point, at this point, some students are confused about this. Just a second, guys, uh, half a minute, sorry, half a minute, right? Uh, because up to this point, 
we applied Gauss's law all the time, right? We would pick Gaussian surface and every time we would count all the charges, even the charges inside of the hole and so on, right? And so, but now we apply this conservation of charge and, and I'm not counting in this uh, charge in the hole. And some students are confused sort of how come that in those cases we count charges inside here, we're not counting charges inside. So hold it guys. We try, we apply, we're talking about two different things, two different tools, apples and oranges. So Gauss's law and conservation of charge, they have nothing in common except for they belong to the same world of electricity. And we need to remember how to apply Gauss's law. And we need to remember uh, all the uh, I know, ideas how to apply conservation of charge, right? It's not like a, uh, <clears throat> if you work in the garage, right, you need to learn uh, how to use a screwdriver and how to use just a regular wrench. They're, they're just two different tools, right? So we cannot compare uh, how this tool works with, uh, with the process how this uh, tool works, right? So in the Gauss's law, we count all the charges which is physically present inside of the Gaussian surface. But in the conservation of charge, in this case, I want to count all the charges inside of the conducting material. This charge plus, Q, plus three nanocoulombs inside of the hole, it's not part of the conducting material. Just two different tools. We just need to remember and know how to use this and how to use that tool, right? explanation is simple okay guys next class we will start making a big turn and we will start developing a completely new approach to solve problems to simple we will start making attempts to simplify our life okay guys sorry for holding you a little bit but this is the common confusion uh since quite often students come to me with these questions i usually try to sort of um, explain it to everyone right? okay any questions and i'm here waiting Otherwise, I will see you uh, on Monday and I'm, I hope I will be on campus already.